we pride ourselves in effectively addressing our customers, uh, what we call dual mandate or dual set of challenges. My name is Baskar Sambasivan, Vice President and Head of Life Sciences for Americas at Cognizant. Cognizant is a global provider of services and solutions for technology, business process services and consulting for many of the world's leading uh, companies across industries. Our healthcare and life sciences business represents almost 26% of our overall company revenue. And uh, we pride ourselves um, in effectively addressing our customers uh, what we call dual mandate or dual set of challenges. On one hand, we work with them very closely to optimize their business and technology operations by um, leveraging our global distributed workforce. But the other, other side, we also work with them to transform their businesses uh, through our consulting and product groups to help them um, provide access to the latest and greatest technologies, latest and greatest uh, solutions, and innovation in the marketplace. This is reflective of our engagements and partnership with many of the um, top pharma, biotech, and medical devices uh, companies in the marketplace right now. I think the top trends that is impacting R&D in the coming years, I would call the three E's. The first E is the empowered patient. So patient is becoming the center of the healthcare ecosystem right now. So almost every function, every organization is looking to how to better engage patients. Specifically in R&D, they are looking at engaging patients better during clinical trials in terms of patient education services, patient adherence services, to reduce dropouts and also making the uh, clinical trials more effective. And the whole move towards personalized medicines, which is all about specific treatments for targeted population, patient population, is going to fundamentally change the way clinical trials are, uh, are being conducted. The second E is the whole evolution of uh, outcome-based models. But the healthcare, healthcare transformation in play uh, right now, everybody is looking, uh, and many, many, many of the pharma organizations are looking to uh, move towards outcome-based model. It's not just about delivering multiple treatments uh, to a patient, it's all about the cure. So how can they differentiate the value of their product both from a quality of uh, uh, life improvement as well as from an economic value. So fundamentally, uh, companies are looking at conducting additional trials, um, looking at real world evidence, comparative studies. And for new uh, products, they are um, looking at collaboration across the value chain to be able to look at different aspects to drive the best outcome. The third E I can say is uh, externalization and collaboration. Many of the organizations today are realizing the collaboration is the key to success. And they are looking at collaborating with academia, peer organizations, also with consortiums. And um, this type of collaboration they are seeing is uh, going to help them not only reduce the spend, but also improve productivity and also improve the probability of uh, clinical success. The greatest opportunities for technologies and disruptive innovations that can help improve clinical trial and R&D in the coming years, I would say about three or four of them. The first one is the advent of wearable devices, biometric sensors, biometric devices, and also even uh, mobile devices, which helps collect real-time data from patient more, than, more easier than ever. So investigators and, and um, uh, physicians can now conduct trials, almost communicate and have a two-way dialogue with, the, with their patients on an ongoing basis, monitor them remotely, provide feedback, as well as um, help them review their data on an ongoing basis. And at some point in time, even convert uh, some of the office visits, reduce the office visits, and even conduct uh, uh, trials remotely. And that is going to significantly change the way uh, clinical trials are going to be conducted in the future. The second is uh, increasingly organizations are looking at how to harness the data that they have within their enterprise and outside the enterprise with the usage of technologies like big data, uh, data mining, as well as uh, other advanced analytics uh, technologies which can pro provide them better insight during a clinical trial and after clinical trials. The, um, the third is increasingly I've, I've um, I've seen some of the organizations look at crowdsourcing for scientific discovery. So with the recent uh, success, which uh, Innocentive, uh, who awarded a $1 million prize for a cure of uh, ALS, which is uh, uh, neurodegenerative disease, 
with the success that it has shown, many companies are looking at collaboration and crowdsourcing to drive new scientific discoveries. Last but not the least, R&D organizations have over the years built uh, behemoth, um, large, co complex transactional systems, which are cumbersome to use and not easy to uh, access. Now, organizations are looking at how to make the user more productive and more uh, enhance the user experience by providing and focusing on technologies which are related to systems of engagement by de uh, decoupling, uh, decoupling from systems of record. So namely, study dashboards, mobile field monitoring, investigator portal, to name a few, which will enhance the productivity and collaboration across clinical trials. There are a few misconce misconceptions out there with pharma organizations in terms of usage of technology. The number one, I would say, is about using data that's outside the network and on the cloud. And today, um, facts and data, historical data prove that the breaches and data breaches and security breaches is probably more uh, because of a physical uh, theft of a laptop device or a mobile device as opposed to, or paper, loss of paper records as opposed to data on the network. So it's very safe out on the cloud. Even uh, companies are looking at uh, um, uh, putting PHI data on the cloud. But with any technology, there's always a risk. Appropriate due diligence needs to be uh, uh, conducted. The other popular misconception is technology is, uh, at least in R&D, technology is very private, it has to be local, and it cannot be shared. Um, gone are the day, uh, the, those days with consortiums uh, like Transcelerate and Pistoia Alliance that are coming up, who are looking at common platforms, common solutions that can, uh, that can be commonly leveraged and shared across multiple, multiple organizations. Uh, at the same time, uh, reducing the total spend as well as uh, being able, uh, able to leverage the best practices. So, so I would say those are the two misconceptions. With respect to data, the, the whole advent of big data is just increasingly uh, becoming significant uh, in many of the pharma organizations, simply because in a, in a networked or collaborative pharma model that we talked about, the data is not just coming from internal, it's also coming from external payers, regulators, providers, um, other academia, and other partners, and, and also from social media, from in terms of what's happening out there, uh, patient chatter and other k oil chatter that we need to be uh, you know, um, picked up. So you need technologies that mine this data in an uh, effective manner and aggregate it and then present it in the most appropriate manner to relevant parties, and that's the biggest challenge. So the, the promise of big data is significant. Many of the pharma organizations today are um, engaged in pilot programs. Um, for example, about either um, mining safety data from a social channel or even looking at um, targeting specific uh, patients for personalized medicine. Um, but what pharma organizations are also looking at uh, significant investments in what they call information uh, management to insight by uh, putting in advanced uh, analytics technologies as well as specific uh, roles called data scientists to harness the data and then make uh, use of it. The second piece of data um, that we talked about, which I mentioned earlier, is the whole data that's coming from the mobile devices and wearable devices and all the sensors and devices, which is real time, so you, you need to be able to have enough of uh, integration and mechanisms uh, in-house to be able to harness that, um, pro get the necessary insight real time and provide feedback. So those are very important uh, advancements in, in, in the whole data space uh, for pharma. Cognizant has a dedicated group called Emerging Business Accelerators, also called EBA, which focuses on building products and solutions across industries. and. This is different from our traditional technology service lines that we have as a company. Given our presence in healthcare and life sciences, which represents about 26% of our business, we have early access to the industry challenges, requirements from our customers, their problem statements. So because of which, we are able to make investments and, and uh, in these products and solutions, which are gaps in the market. In some cases, we also co-create the solutions and products with our customers as joint investments, where one pharma or one company invests along with us, which can be leveraged with uh, 
by other companies in a, almost a pay-for-use model. That way, technology can be shared. Um, to us, to Cognizant, more than anything else, we want to be able to drive disruptive innovation in the marketplace through this uh, EBA group, which is one of the reasons uh, this whole group is being managed and run like a startup under the principles of a lean startup model, which drives the entrepreneurial uh, thinking and, and innovation across the organization to be able to uh, bring the latest innovation to our customers to help transform their businesses. And specifically, um, the whole partnership trials co conference is very, very important and it's a great place to network uh, with the, some of my peers in the industry and also with other customers. And I think more importantly, it's also a place to share collective ideas, the latest thinking, and this is a place I would say for innovation.